Sequoia, Tahoe. Sequoia, Tahoe. And my Tahoe even has that glass effect. Ooh, so liquidy. Not that huge a fan, but that's uh, a very different story. Aside from the liquid glass, which I have a feeling it's really gonna slow down the performance and drain your battery a little bit faster, but I'll do some more tests. This being a developer beta also might uh, make you wonder, should I install this or not so I can test any apps or just take it out for a ride? And you might do what I did over here and commit, but I have a second machine where I can try that out. And I wasn't not super impressed. Of course, it's a developer beta. I know, I know, you don't have to leave that comment. Don't leave that comment. Okay, you can leave that comment if you want. It's a developer beta, which means it's gonna have all kinds of debugging code in there, probably. I don't know how developer betas work, but what I tried to do was go back to see if I can download a beta Sequoia or a beta Sonoma, and those are not available anymore. So I can actually do some tests and compare that to how the beta affects performance versus the regular release. Anyway, there's probably telemetry code that's running here that's not gonna be there when the official release is out, so the performance will improve. However, I did notice significant effects on the GPU, especially when you're moving your screens around liquid glass toolbar. But let's say you don't wanna go through any of that and you just wanna install it and try it out. Here's how you do it. You might know that I'm a longtime user of Parallels. I've been using it for over 10 years now, and usually I run Windows on it. It's as simple as just opening up parallels and pushing play on a Windows machine and boom, I'm in Windows. I can run Visual Studio in here. I can run all my different Windows workflows, closing a bunch of pop-ups. It's Windows. It's real. It's going to have pop-ups and ads in the search bar. Well, Alex, you have Windows machines too. Why would you want to run parallels and run Windows in there? Well, if I want to carry one machine with me and it's this MacBook Pro right here, my daily driver, I can run Windows inside of that. And guess what? LTT just did an experiment where they ran MacBooks, these two guys right here, and they couldn't give it up. But here's the kicker after they did this for a few months alex went and bought his own macbook pro he was converted this is not a macbook pro ad by the way apple video oh for one thing this is still in my backpack this is still in my backpack still still but okay i switched by now wait what about second macbook pro i bought this with my own money he bought it with his own money but why why did you buy it here. I opened this piece of crap up, this Windows garbage. The driver update literally failed, bricked it. It took me like two hours to get it. And I was just like, F this and ordered a MacBook. <laughs> not even that, not even that. I'm sure there's plenty of Windows machine that work fine as long as you maintain the updates and the drivers and all that. But wait. I can't think <clears throat> of many people on staff who in the past were more adamantly anti-Mac than this man. <laughs> Parallels. I was also in the same exact boat as Alex here, and my name happens to be Alex too. I mean, that's just a coincidence. Windows on ARM, they have fixed so much stuff. I can run SolidWorks on this better than I can run it on this. Boom. There you go, that's why. And this takes me back to why I switched from using a PC laptop back in the day when I was doing SharePoint development to using a Mac. It's because when I used virtualized Windows on a Mac, it ran inside the virtual machine faster and better and it turned on quicker and everything was more responsive in a virtual machine than on my Windows machine. Same boat, Alex, same boat. But we're not talking about Windows today. We're talking about the ability of Parallels to run other operating systems, including Linux. You can run many different instances of Windows. You can run many different instances of Linux all on the same machine. And you can run the new Mac OS Tahoe or other versions of Mac OS if you want to, but I've never tried running a future operating system on my current operating system. And that's really freaking cool. The ability to do that is fantastic because now I can try out these features without devoting myself and without committing, having to do that on my system and ruining, potentially ruining my system. So now I have everything I need inside Tahoe. I can even maximize this window and now I won't even know that I'm not on Tahoe. Everything works exactly the same way here. I have VS Code, I have all my developer tools. I installed Chrome, of course. I even installed LM Studio and I'm querying LLMs through it. Hi, no model selected. Come on, select the model. Does this thing have activity monitor? I never actually checked to see if my virtual machine has an activity monitor, but I don't see why it wouldn't. There it is. There's the activity monitor of the virtual machine. Now I did specify how many processors I wanna to allocate to my virtual machine. My real machine, my host, 
has 16 cores and it has 128 gigs of memory. My virtual machine, I've allocated eight cores to it and I allocated, I believe, 32 gigs of memory. I can allocate whatever memory I want and however many cores I want. This runs everything I need. Look at that. It's running 90 tokens per second for this Gemma 3 model. I actually wonder what the GPU history looks like inside here because inside virtual machines, nested virtualization is still a thing that we're looking forward to being able to do and hopefully it's coming soon. It's not quite here yet. I know you all love that high prompt, but it's easy to type, okay? Write a story, boom. There it is. So we're not actually seeing any kind of uh, GPU activity here inside the virtual machine, but we will see that reflected in the GPU history of the host, and there it is. So it is passing through and using that GPU. That's how we're getting that crazy amount of tokens per second there. I have Xcode installed here and I can create brand new projects for iOS 26 without having to install all those iOS simulators, the new ones for iOS 26 on my host. You can, uh, if you have Sequoia, 15.5 and higher, you can do that, but you're not gonna get all the features. One caveat here is you're not gonna get Apple intelligence inside here. That's just a little limitation that is being addressed, but right now it's not available. So how do you do this? To get started, you first need to be a member of the developer program for Apple, that costs a hundred bucks a year, and then you'll have access to the developer downloads. They got everything here, Xcode, iOS 26 beta, iPad OS, uh, Mac OS 26, beta that's the one we need so let's click on that and that's about a a not insignificant download of 17 gigabytes once that's downloaded just pop open your parallels control center click on the little plus here and click on this button now normally to get windows you just click on this one and boom you got windows but here you're going to click on install windows linux or mac os from an image click on that continue and then it'll automatically detect where you have your file which is this ipsw file the universal mac 26 but if it doesn't find it then you can just search for it and point to it choose manually click continue give it a name where you want the image to be stored and you can customize settings before installation too click create now usually you don't need to do that you can just click create and it'll do everything automatically for you but if you want to customize things like sharing hardware here's where you can select how many cpu cores you want to allocate let's say 14 how much memory you want to allocate let's say i want uh let's say 48 gigabytes to this machine <laughs> that's a lot i can do that and then i click continue starting mac os and boom you're in this will take you through a regular mac os setup you can even migrate from an existing machine if you want to i have a migration guide too i'll link to that down below if you're curious look at that beautiful liquid glass hello set up as a new this page is a little bit different because now it says help apple and app developers improve their products and service automatically there is no yes or no option here because it is a developer beta so you have to help them all you can click there is continue enable siri and we're on the desktop liquid glass that's it. The only thing you want to do now is go up here to this menu and click on install parallels tools. This just installs a bunch of helper applications to make things run smoother on your guest operating system. So now I can play around, do whatever I want on this machine, take snapshots of it, install dangerous software if I want to, because I can always back off of that and go to the previous snapshot. And this is beautiful for developers that want to test out new software to see how your apps are going to look on Tahoe. And if you want to set up some kind of a development environment where you're using multiple machines to communicate with each other, here you go. I've got two Mac OS's, three technically with the host, and I got Windows too. I can even have a bunch of Linuxes. You get the idea. So check this out. There's a link down below if you want to download Parallels for yourself. It's an affiliate link. I would appreciate if you use my link. You do get a 35% discount right now, so it's a good deal. Anyway, thanks for watching. And if you want to see how I use Windows for development on my Mac, you can watch this video right over here. I'll see you next time.